Security straight out Ponzi schemes. Um, but the fact of the matter is, more money was raised through ICOs than venture capital. But what happened? The world stopped relocating to Silicon Valley and begging VCs in order to give them money and instead went to the world and said, do you agree with this value? Um, and the, the whole world participated in that. Then what did venture capitalists do? Well, they came along and started investing in the Ponzi scheme scams and started getting discounts um, and trying to get discounts and, and you know, uh, sell them to retail and uh, at higher prices. And what happened is the venture capital industry started participating um, in this industry. So now the venture capitalists are just one of the participants in an industry that is much greater than their capital. Um, and there's competition for that. So, and, and then the SEC comes along and says, well, we're going to clamp down on this stuff. Well, great. That means that America is now the worst place in the world in order to raise finance um, for your business if you're trying to do something in the blockchain and, and crypto sector and issue one of these tokens. Um, so, you know, that's the, 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 the venture capital industry is not disrupted. They are just one of the players. They're one of the investors um, that compete for other money and other investors. Um, and they're all trying to scramble around and adjust and figure out, oh, wow, well, now we can actually have secondary market liquidity on our investments. Um, and if this starts moving around the regulated route, well, you have regulated securities. You have different jurisdictions that will support cryptocurrency. Um, and then you'll have completely decentralized out of the control of everyone. Um, and those markets are going to exist. And people just need to decide, like it, hate it, it's here, it's coming, and it's not going away. Now, let's talk about Bank to the Future for a second, because you've been on the forefront of this industry now since practically it's an, it's an inception. And uh, you had an ATS license, the Alternative Trading System license through a company you owned called Venovate. Now, you sold that to Coinbase. Uh, what can you tell us about the deal? What does it say for the future in regards to U.S. investors? So this is, this is the big question. You know, the U.S. is being cut out of a lot of deals because of the regulations in the U.S. So you, with this deal, with Coinbase that you've been involved with, does, how is that going to reshape the regulatory framework, if at all? Your thoughts, Simon? Uh, yeah, just, just to get that um, factually correct. So we were a shareholder in Keystone Capital Corporation that was then sold to Coinbase, and Coinbase is looking to enter the securities um, market um, in order to do that. Now, the interesting thing right now, and this touches upon many of the things that we were actually uh, speaking about, is that U.S. legislation is not necessarily fit for purpose for the token market. Um, for example, there's things in U.S. legislation that state if you have an ATF, you can't actually display the price and have an order book. Now, the crypto market is used to order book and displaying prices. Um, you know, and because if you do have uh, an order book and are displaying the prices, then you need to be registered as a national securities exchange. In also, in order to sell those exemptions um, and allow those, uh, you know, those markets to be non-public companies and still be able to sell them as they have been, um, there needs to be a one-year lock-in according to U.S. securities law. So combine those forces, and you've actually got a very inappropriate legislative um, structure and regulatory structure in order to operate what the crypto market is used, used to. Now, the whole world is focusing on the U.S., obviously, because the SEC is the most vocal regulator. But around the world, they're putting fit-for-purpose fit regulations, and they don't have these hangovers and restrictions from being you know, the leading financial market in the world, um, whereas someone else is getting the opportunity to leapfrog. You know, we saw that with, um, you know, M-Pesa just leapfrogging the banking system, going straight to mobile money, while other jurisdictions, they're leapfrogging securities, um, IPOs and exchanges, and going straight to where we want to be. And that's what Bank to the Future has been working on. And we've been asking the question, you know, is focusing on the U.S. the right strategy? Um, is that the right approach? Well, it depends where they go from here and what happens next. But if not, there's other jurisdictions willing to build fit for purpose um, and do this in the way that the crypto market is uh, wants wants it done. Let, let me ask you about uh, you know Africa. You know, you mentioned M-Pesa in Africa, and of course we know BitPesa 
Uh, we've been involved in f helping to finance that company. And recently on Bank of the Future, our, our good friends at BitMari uh, were able to uh, raise some funds. They are now got a, a banking, I guess, a banking license in Zimbabwe. Um, so, I mean, this is part of the great thing about this industry, Simon, is not only are you disrupting the banking industry, as you've stated you know, in your book when you started out, but you're also changing dynamics in the global finance in a big way. So Africa potentially could be uh, the whole continent, certainly countries within, within Africa, can leapfrog ahead of all these other uh, territories. And it could be a really interesting success story. You would know better. What do you see there? Um, absolutely. And, you know, we're, we're geographically diversified. We think that crypto has its unique position in, in many different geographies. You know, I was just speaking from, um, you know, with, with I think you spoke to Sunny from Unicoin recently, another company, um, you know, we were, we were investing in and in the early days. Um, and, you know, in India, the banks come along and state that uh, the banks are no longer allowed to work with cryptocurrency exchanges. So how does an exchange like Unicoin react like that? Well, they say, well, thank God, we don't have a banking license. Let's create, let's create some decentralized technology. Um, let's uh, look at different opportunities. Well, let's look at the cash to crypto market. If the banks aren't allowed to participate, then regulations are stating that we can participate. Now the banks can't compete with us. And so a lot of these announcements that you see are often interpreted as, as negative, but actually have very pos can have positive results when the entrepreneurs in this industry are nimble enough to adjust to the environment. All right, Africa Simon, we got to cut her off there, but a fantastic message. Just work around it. The entrepreneurs in crypto are the best, and the fiat money is in retreat. Simon Dixon, thanks for being on the Kaiser Report. Thank you, Max.